everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to chat about all of the books that I read in 2023, going through them all and giving like mini reviews of each one. And it seems only fitting that this video is sponsored by Audible because the vast, vast majority of these books I listened to on Audible because I do not have the time to read many physical books, but my life is very suited to lots of walking and audiobook listening. So we have 21 books to get through, but I am actually filming this at the end of November, so there is still time for me to get a few more in there. I did not set myself a reading goal this year it was just like joy joy reading goal rather than like numbers reading goal and as you'll see from this list basically I just went really hard into fantasy especially Brandon Sanderson <laughs> so I think the majority of these books are gonna be his books also I like sharing this kind of stuff because at least for me I feel like most of the people who I watch on YouTube who are talking about books read somewhere between 50 to like 200 books a year and that is like aspirational but completely unachievable for me so I hope that this video like helps to balance out those expectations and pressures of reading that we put on ourselves because yes I have read 21 books this year but some of these books are like 40 50 hours long <laughs> this was the year I truly did not care about number of books because I was like, I'm just gonna dive into the longest books that I know exist. Speaking of which, we're gonna run through in chronological order from the beginning of the year to the end. And the first book that I read this year was Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. So this is the second book in the Stormlight Archive. And I think it might be my favorite. Although now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, can I clearly distinguish what happens in each one? But this is the one where you get more of Shalon's backstory, which I very very much enjoyed. The second book that I read this year was then Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson which is the third book in the Stormlight Archive. This one you get more of Dalinar's backstory and for anyone who just hasn't read these books or has no interest in these books you're like what? They're really high fantasy books where you've got magical characters. <laughs> so silly. The, you know there are different people and there's like land disputes and there's resources disputes and there's power struggles and so far what's kind of happened is that you're getting like all of the current events playing out and then each book you get flashbacks to like one character's like origin story so book one was Kaladin, two Shallan, three Dalinar and honestly my least favorite one Oathbringer. I mean his story, his backstory is wild but it just wasn't vibing with me in the same way as Shallan's. But yeah Brandon Sanderson is just such an incredible writer. The audiobooks are narrated by Michael Kramer and Kate Redding and oh my goodness, I just love, love their voices. Speaking of voices, the next book that I read slash listened to was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And this was a re-listen because I wanted it fresh before the TV series came out. I actually regret this because it was too fresh in my mind and I got very judgy of the TV adaptation and actually I should have just allowed myself to enjoy the TV adaptation which I now do and haven't stopped listening to the soundtrack of that show and the Aurora album the fictional but now it actually exists music album that they created for that show anyway this audiobook is one of my favorite books ever I'm not really a rereader but this oh oh it is a full cast every character is a different voice actor the way that the book is structured is that it is interviews of all of these different characters and so for the audio version it was you know like listening to a podcast or a like a radio story or something it's incredible I honestly could gush about this audiobook for days but in terms of the story if you don't know what Daisy Jones and the Six is about it's very like 1970s rock and roll it follows a band and it's like interviews with the members of the band and like people around them like 20 years later after everything fell apart it's very Fleetwood Mac rumors it's amazing but this book is one of those instances where I just look at audiobooks as like a whole medium and like art form in themselves like the thing that you're getting from the audiobook is so different from what you would get if you just read 
the words on a page. And so yeah, while sometimes an audiobook can feel like someone's just reading you a story, other times, like this one, you feel like the story is being like performed and like played out to you. Incredible. And so <laughs> that leads me nicely to thank the sponsor of this video, Audible. Like I said, I love audiobooks and I use Audible and there's something just so special about having like multiple narrators and having all of these voices in your head and really being able to picture the characters. Mm, love it. And then also the ones where it is just one narrator, but they just do all of the voices so well. You're just like, what a skill. Amazing. Also a non-fiction book read by the author is very, very special. Love that. It's such an exciting and unique medium and Audible are all about the power of voice to bring stories, ideas, and characters to life. As you'll see from the list of books that I read this year, the vast majority I listened to on Audible. And I just love that it makes reading accessible to me in terms of fitting in with my lifestyle as a mum, like just walking around, doing naps, to and fro and from childcare, like the amount of walking and listening that I do, so good, love it. Like I said, the Stormlight Archive books are 40 to 50 hours long each and I flew through them. The Mistborn series, which we will get to, are like 10 to 20 hours long each. The amount of time that I've spent this year listening to Michael Kramer's voice was time well spent, time very well spent. So thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description to check out Audible and get listening now. So no surprises, the next book that I read was Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. <laughs> This one was so exciting. I loved that we got more Navani in this book. She's a queen, but she's also an engineer and she fell in love with her dead husband's brother. I mean, excellent, excellent. This is the last book of the Stormlight Archive that is currently out and the next one is meant to be released November next year. And I'm very excited about that because Dan, my husband, actually had listened to them all before and was the one that got me into Brandon Sanderson. And it means that for this, next release we can listen simultaneously and like talk to each other and be like have you got to this bit yet have you got to this bit yet very excited next up still in the fantasy realm but i think this one is ya is crooked kingdom by leigh bardugo this is the second book in the six of crows duology i read the first one i think before rowan was born but then i think i finished it just after he was born because it was a library book and i was like quick 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 read to get it back i think i actually might have been slightly fined like 50p for getting that book back in late but I was giving birth so <laughs> there's that. But Crooked Kingdom is book two in that duology and I loved this series and this is another one where the chapters are from multiple characters perspectives and the audiobook is lots of different voices and also I recognize one of them. I think one of the characters, I can't remember which now, was also one of the voice actors in Daisy Jones and I was like I recognize that voice. <laughs> I got into these because I really loved the Shadow and Bone TV series but I was less interested in the Shadow and Bone characters and more interested in the Six of Crows characters. So I was just like, eh, I'll skip the Shadow and Bone books and I'll just read Six of Crows. And I loved it. Next up, we have our first physical book and it is this one, The Care Manifesto, The Politics of Interdependence by The Care Collective. You might remember this. This is one of the books that I picked up on our like feminist, queer, socialist bookshop crawl of London. And it's the only one out of all of the books that I got that day that I have read. Do you you know why? Can you can you see why? It's because it's tiny. I read this a while ago but I remember really enjoying it and there's lots of turned corners and honestly I'm now like let's see what is here. What have I written here? Mutual support, public space, shared resources and local democracy and I've written Olio because that's an app where you like share free stuff with your neighbours. What does this one say? Promiscuous care recognises that not all women want to be mothers whether they can be or not and that caring for children who are not your own, caring for the community and caring for the environment are equally valuable tasks that must be adequately resourced and appreciated. Thank you. This is a book that I'm probably like gonna come back to. What have I written here? Chosen Family. Da, 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 da. In both past and present, men have frequently been punished for being less masculine rather than being encouraged to care and acknowledge their own dependencies. Very true. But it's really great and it takes you through kind of like the different levels of care, like within family, within community, but then like state level and then like global level and environment and politics and like all of that. Really great and really little. 
Next up, we are back to audiobooks. We are back to Brandon Sanderson. We are back to Michael Kramer and the Mistborn series. The first book in the first era that I read was The Final Empire. Now, I have complicated feelings about this book because actually, overall, I prefer the Stormlight Archive. I have a lot less gripes with it. The Mistborn series as like an arc, as the whole thing, amazing, wow. <gasps> Like, Brandon Sanderson knows how to write a climax and then, like, twists and turns and honestly, it's amazing. This trilogy, this first era, really did that in terms of the epic climaxes of each book and then the twists at the end, like, in between the books as well. It's just like, oh shit, <laughs> oh shit, we thought everything had resolved and now this thing. But my main gripe with The Final Empire, and it's more with this book specifically rather than any of the others, because I think it got a bit better, was that it was really giving me not like other girl vibes. So our main character is Vin, she's a teenage girl. She kind of goes on a bit of a like chosen one sort of, but not really kind of arc where she like discovers her powers and all of this stuff. But she is literally the only female character in this book. She talks regularly about being not like other girls. Oh, it's so painful. There are two other women like referenced in the story, but one is Vin's dead mother and the other is the other main character's dead wife. And so there's just also a lot of dead women who are kind of nudging other characters along in their path by being dead which didn't feel great to me. That's my main gripe with The Final Empire. But other than that, I really enjoyed it. I loved all of the characters. I love the world and the way that the allomancy and the power with all the metals is like explained. Brandon Sanderson is so good at, like when it comes to fantasy magic, being like, these are the rules. This is what you can do with the power. These are its limitations. And it's almost like a science. It's really complicated, but it really helps you to believe that the characters like could die or could get hurt. Like it makes the stakes more believable rather than being like, uh, oh, but they're just invincible. They've got all these powers, like whatever. But yeah, don't like that not like other girls kind of crap. So because of that, it took me a while to revisit the Mistborn series because I was just a bit like, mm, 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 I don't know. And instead I listened to The Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff. This was on the long list for the Women's Prize this year and my friend Lena made a video about all of the long list books and her reviews of them. And this was the one that stood out to me the most in terms of like, yes, oh my God, I wanna read that. And I'm so glad I did. It's about a group of Indian women who like live together in their town, in their village. And it's about like the friendships, but also like the politics of those relationships. It's about them like coming together for better or worse to try and like better their situations as women in the world that they live in. It is so funny, kind of dark, and it felt like a real breath of fresh air of kind of like anti-sisterhood. Like these women don't like each other, but they realize that they have to cooperate with each other. And it was great, would recommend. Next was another physical book, but I don't have it because I got it from the library and it was The Wife by Meg Wallitzer. This is another Lena recommendation. I read a lot of books that either Lena recommends or my husband Dan recommends. That's basically what I read. This is about an old couple, been married decades. The husband is an author and they're flying somewhere to go accept like a big literary prize and she decides that she's gonna divorce him. And then you get a lot of like what's currently happening and flashbacks to how they got together and everything. And in Lena's video, she mentioned that there's a big twist. And I immediately guessed the twist. And when I saw her, I was like, is the twist this? And she was like, wait, what? How did you get it? And I was like, no. I felt like it was kind of obvious. I won't say anything now, but I really enjoyed this. It was great. Lots of really interesting stuff about kind of like gendered dynamics within relationships. Mm -mm -mm. Next up, I listened to Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. And this one was narrated by Nicola What's-Her-Face from Derry Girls and Bridgerton. Amazing. This is about witches. It's like set in the real world, but with this like magic fantasy element where there are witches. And the premise of this book was that there was a very powerful witch who happened to be a trans girl. And the like head of the coven was like, no, she's not a witch. Basically a massive turf and transphobe. And you're seeing all of that like, 
gender politics play out, but with magic and witches and witch world politics and stuff. And it was great. And do you know who also does cliffhangers and big twists really well? Juno Dawson. The end of that book. What? Next, another physical one. It is Gwen and Art Are Not In Love by Lex Croucher. This is probably the longest physical book that I read all year. A lovely YA medieval gay romp. This was so fun and easy and just like a refreshing read. Lex is just such a good and funny writer as well. Like I love all of their books. I think there's some more of their books on this list as well, maybe one more. And this is their first YA novel and I don't really read a whole lot of YA anymore, but this was excellent. So after those palette cleansers, I decided to come back to the Mistborn series and I listened to The Well of Ascension. And then I was hooked. This book was so much better than the first. There were some more female characters in it. Still not like excellent representation by any means, but it was like, you know, a whole other two. So that's like, can't do maths, like two, a 200% increase, 300, I'm not sure. But this book was great. And once again, massive climax, massive twist, not not expecting any of it. Next, I listened to The Hero of Ages, the final book in this era of Mistborn because I could not wait. I was like, I need to know what happens. And this book honestly was incredible. I love this book so much. I think as someone who is not religious at all, I love reading about fantasy religions because you know, their gods are real. <laughs> and the gods in this world kind of like have their own agendas and limitations on their powers and like, you know, history and backstory and lore and like all of this kind of stuff. And I find that stuff really fascinating in fantasy um and yeah this was a big religion book and the end of it again not expecting incredible incredible then i immediately dived into the second era of the mistborn series with the alloy of law and i didn't like it i just wasn't invested in any of these characters maybe i should have given it a bit of a longer break between the two i didn't care i felt like the story was really limited it felt really self-contained like it didn't do the like big thing that I love from Brandon Sanderson with all of his world building and stuff. Like this is the second era. So it's set like 300 years later from the first Mistborn books. And I didn't really like feel that. But Dan then explained to me that maybe what might have happened because the second era is four books, not three, that this first one was actually like originally intended to be a standalone maybe. And then they were like, oh, hang on, let's do this big arc. And yes, we will, we will get to why I think that might be the case in a bit. But yeah, this book just did not really do it for me. I didn't really care about any of the characters other than Steris. Love Steris. But she wasn't really in it. She gets kidnapped like right at the beginning and then we never see her again. And I didn't really care. I didn't really care. So once again, stepped away from the Cosmo and the next book that I listened to was Burnout by Selena Barker. Now, I think this was around the time when I was like making my decision to leave the sex ed content. And I was like in that very confused confused state of mind. And so this read was a cry for help, but actually it was kind of just like, eh, I don't, I don't think I really got anything from it other than I was like, no, I don't think I am burnt out. <laughs> then I came back to Juno's HMRC world and listened to The Shadow Cabinet, which was the second book after Her Majesty's Royal Coven. And once again, excellent. We got like a glimpse into different parts of the world and like different covens. And again, that climax, that twist at the end, and I don't know how long it is we have to wait for the third and final one. There is a novella that Juno's released, maybe it's come out, maybe it's soon, which is like a prequel to it all, which is about Anne Boleyn and the first coven. So I'm tempted to read that as well, just to like get me a bit more witches. But yeah, it's really interesting. There's like an evil character in this second book who is just a lot more complicated. And I love me a complicated evil character that you kind of end up rooting for despite the atrocities that they have committed. Right, I knew that there was another Lex Croucher book on this list. I listened to Trouble. This is their third like Regency rom-com novel and I love all of these books. Reputation, Infamous and Now Trouble. They're just excellent. They're so funny. They're very modern but like set in the Regency time. The characters are all so unique and lovable. And one of the characters in this book, I won't say which, but some of you might be able to guess, has a name that when I learned something about that character, I was like, oh, that could 
be a good name for a second child, so we'll see. I told Dan that I like that name, so thank you Lex for that name inspiration. We'll see, who knows? But yeah, if you like Regency era and you like rom-coms, but you also like them to be a bit more modern and a bit more gay, then would recommend Lex's books. Next is another physical book, which is Mating in Captivity by Esther Perel, and I made a whole video about this. This is the one sex non-fiction book that I read this year, and it's one that I've been meaning to read for years, and yes, loved it. You can watch that whole video if you want to know more about my main takeaways from it. So after that next palette cleanser, I came back to the Mistborn books and Shadows of Self is the second one in the second era. Is anyone else following? And this one got me. We had more Steris. I love Steris. There was still not as much Steris as I would have liked in this book, but I'm very glad that she was around. But this book felt more like it was a part of a bigger arc and a bigger story rather than it being like a self-contained, like tied up neatly in a bow kind of thing. And yeah, I loved this book. It brought back in a lot of the stuff that like happened in the original era, in the first era, but it's like 300 years later. So some of the ways that like the characters understand like what happened back then and the way that like the religions of that time have like developed now is just so fascinating and so clever and interesting. The politics of the time as well is really interesting, especially because not much has changed, but I think that's very telling. And yeah, very much this book was just like, okay, yep, I'm invested in Miss Born Era 2. Let's go. The next book, this is such a silly one and feels like such an oddball on this list, but it's Copywriting Secrets by Jim Edwards. Now, this book was recommended to me by my friend Taha. After I told him, I was like, oh, maybe I want to be like a project manager for other creators and like to help them with like organization and systems and processes and stuff. And he was like, you're going to want to figure out what your like sell is, like what are your services and like how do you talk about them to other people? People, and he recommended me this book. And it's basically a book about sales. And I read the ebook of this and I essentially got through it very painfully and slowly. Like whenever I would be like feeding Rowan to sleep, I'd be like either playing mobile phone games or reading this book. And at the beginning, I will say, fine, there were some like good tips in there. Like if you are a freelancer of any sorts who's trying to like sell products or services, there's some great like exercises that he gives you near the beginning in terms of like things that you can do to help figure out like your copy and the language and everything like that. But this man is just inserting so many like weird personal shit into this book about copywriting. And basically what happened was anytime I came across like an absolutely wild quote in this book, I like had to screenshot it and send it to Taha. So I was like, why have you recommended me this book? This man is like, what, what? And I just need to give you a flavor of this man's personality. Here we go. I've met some copywriters who are masters. They're egotistical and give off the aura. Don't talk to me because I'm cool. It's a bit of a turn off. Why do we need that in there? And then this, everybody needs to lose weight, but they don't do anything about it. There is so much unnecessary fat phobia in this book. I just, I can't. Here we go. <laughs> this again. Now in my 50s, I'm in better shape than most 25 year olds. I can do 33 pull-ups, 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups in a row without stopping. It's like, okay, Jim, why did you feel the need to tell us that? I just can't with this book. This bit about like the way that you create different statements to sell things to people or whatever. He says, however, instead of evoking a positive feeling, in this case, we use it to crush their soul. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then this one was an interesting tangent that he went on. I'll make a little side comment here that I think people used to be a little bit more respectful of people's feelings and perspectives. Not in all cases, but people had manners. Today, if you go to the mall and listen to a bunch of teenagers hanging out in front of various stores, you will see that manners have escaped many. <laughs> what does this man have against teenagers? <laughs> anyway, so... <laughs> There's a little flavor of that book. I honestly like just skimmed it towards the end. I feel like I got what I needed out of it and had some lols with those quotes, but ultimately I would not recommend this book. And then finally, that actually brings us to the book that I finished yesterday, which is The Bands of Mourning by Brandon Sanderson, read by Michael Kramer. And this is the third book in the second Miss Bourne era, the Wax and Wayne books. 
and this was also excellent. This book went in a direction that I was not expecting it to go in at all. It kind of like broke the confines of what I thought the world was. Like it was like, oh, I thought this was the fantasy world that we're in. And it was like, mm, no, let's just smash that. Actually, boom. And it was like, oh my goodness. And that was very exciting. And what was also very exciting is that Steris was in this book a whole lot more. We got more Steris. I love her. Uh, and I don't know about others who have read this book, but for me, Steris feels very autistic coded and in like a really positive way. There's literally a bit where she's having a conversation with Wax and talking about how she like prepares things to say in social situations because she can't like figure out how to navigate them without all of this preparation. And this woman loves a list. She's a woman after my own heart. Honestly, she's my favorite character in the series. She is great. But I think that's another thing that I really like about Brandon Sanderson's writing is that I think he often includes like representations of mental health and neurodivergence but without like using the modern terminology that we have. So like the Stormlight Archive, oh my goodness, like Kaladin has depression, Shalon is experiencing some like PTSD, like multiple personality thing, but those language, those words are like never used, but those characters' mental health is really like explored and talked about and like highlighted and it's like a big part of their character and like the things that they do and why they act the way they do. And I really like that of like bringing these things things in that a lot of us can relate to, but in fantasy, but then without using like our terminology for things. It still kind of like makes sense in the fantasy world. Um, and I'd be interested to hear like if any of you guys have read any Cosmo books and how you think about how Brandon Sanderson like represents those different things. But yeah, there we go. There's my list of all the 21 books that I have read this year. Thank you so much to Audible again for sponsoring this video. Check out the link in the description to check out Audible and get listening now. Have you read or listened to any of these books that are on my list? Please let me know what you thought of them in the comments. Try and be spoiler free, but of course if you're in my Patreon Discord server and you want to talk about any of these books, by all means use the spoiler bars. We can chat, chat away about them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!